All right, welcome back everyone. G Hurley here coming at you with another educational video. Today, I'm hoping we could learn a lot about arrowheads, okay? And other stone tools that the American Indians used many, many years ago. Well, before we get started, I hope that you enjoy this video and I hope that you consider subscribing to the channel and supporting more educational videos in the future, okay? So before I present this arrowhead collection to you, I wanna talk about some basic things about arrowheads. Mainly, what types of rock arrowheads can be made out of, where you could find arrowheads, because believe it or not, there are millions and millions of these arrowheads that are still out there, okay? So if you're interested and you know where to look, you could find your own arrowheads. So we're gonna talk about that as well. Then we're obviously going to talk a little bit about what these arrowheads were used for and the different types of arrowheads. And then I am going to present the arrowheads in my collection and hope to inspire you to possibly start your own collection, okay? So really quick, let's talk about the type of rock that arrowheads can be made, made with, okay? There's three main types of rock that they can be made with, okay? Obsidian, you see the black arrowheads here, here and here, they can be made with obsidian. Obsidian is an igneous rock. That means it comes from volcanic activity, all right? Now, obsidian is really good for arrowheads because it's almost like glass, very sharp when you form it, all right? Now, some people even call it volcanic glass. So that's why it is very, very good for arrowheads. Now, some of these Native Americans, or most of them, were so skilled that they can make arrowheads and knives from obsidian that were, sh that were sharper than metal. That's how sharp obsidian can get. So obsidian was excellent for making arrowheads, okay? Also, a rock called flint, okay? I believe this would be flint, okay? was very good in making arrowheads, all right? And then another stone called chert. And I believe this tool here was made from chert, okay? So those are the three main types of rock that were used to make arrowheads and stone tools that needed to be sharp. Obsidian, flint, and chert, okay? Now, where, if you want to go looking for arrowheads, and I've gone looking before, and I'll tell you, I've never found an arrowhead. So all of these arrowheads I was given, or I found them in old rock collections, things like that. I've never found an arrowhead, and I'm, I'm still looking, but I haven't found one, okay? They're harder to find in California than other parts of the country, okay? But if you do look for arrowheads, you want to look near rivers, riverbeds or dry riverbeds, okay? Why? Why do you want to look around rivers, you know, the banks of rivers? Well, because the, the Indians and the Native Americans, they set up their camps near rivers. That's smart. You need, you need flowing water to drink, so you set up your camps near waterways, specifically rivers, because that's the type of water you could drink. Okay, flowing water from rivers. So if you're looking for arrowheads, you want to look near rivers or possibly in dried, dried up, dry riverbeds. Okay, so we've gone over the types of rock arrowheads are made from. We talked about where you could find arrowheads. Let's talk a little bit about what arrowheads were used for and some of these stone tools. Okay, so obviously arrowheads were used for hunting and they were used for hunting different types of game. Okay, so if you have a large arrowhead, very large, 
couple large ones here. You're hunting large animals such as deer, bear, you know, antelope, animals like that. Smaller arrowheads were used to hunt smaller animals such as birds possibly. And I'm going to be going over all these arrowheads with you and we'll talk about, you know, what they were used for or what what animals they were used to hunt. Okay? Now not all of these are arrowheads. Let's talk let's start talking about the types of arrowheads I have here. Okay? Not all of these are arrowheads. This one right here, it's made out of obsidian. It's huge. It's big. This is a spear point. So any arrowhead that is bigger than let's say 2 or 3 inches and this wide is most likely a spear point. So this would be attached to a long pole and used as a spear to throw. Okay, not an arrowhead, way too big. You couldn't shoot this with a bow and arrow. It's just too heavy and too big. So this most likely was a spear point. Okay, but definitely obsidian. You can see how it almost looks like glass and how sharp that could be. So this was most likely a spear point, okay? This one here that I think is made from chert. This is not an arrowhead or a spear point. This most likely was a knife tool used for cutting food, for cleaning, for cleaning, you know, animal, animal hides to use for clothing, but definitely a knife tool that was used for some kind of cutting. Not an arrowhead, too big to be an arrowhead, but too small to be a spear point. So I'm thinking this was most likely a knife and, you know, it looks, looks pretty sharp. So we got a, a knife here, definitely a stone tool though. Okay, now the rest of these are arrowheads. Okay, and let's quickly talk about the parts of an arrowhead. I have this really cool looking one here. Definitely an arrowhead. Now the tip is called the point. That's pretty easy. And then the middle part here, we call that the body. Okay, the body. And then we have here where you would attach it to the stick or the arrow part of the shaft, we call it. We call that the base. So that's where it would attach. And this one is either flint, this is not obsidian, this is either flint or chert. And notice um, it has some different colors. So this is a really pretty one. It has some uh, tan here and then tan and more brownish here by the base. But this is a, uh, a larger size arrowhead. So this would probably be used to hunt larger game maybe deer or something like that. But those are the parts of an arrowhead, the tip, the body, and the base. And the base is where you would attach the arrowhead to the shaft, okay? So those are the parts of an arrowhead. All right, we talked about what arrowheads were used for, what kind of animals they were used to hunt. Here's a very small arrowhead. Think about that for a second. What do you think this was used, used to hunt? Yep, you're right. You're probably thinking about birds, yes. Native Americans hunted lots of birds for protein and for food. And the small arrowheads you find were used for birds. We would call this a bird point, okay? Either birds or, you know, maybe a wild turkey. We had lots of wild turkeys all over the country, so this was probably used to hunt small birds or turkeys, wild turkeys. But a very, a very defined point, a nice little face, and a nice little base there that you could use to attach to the shaft of the arrow. Okay, so this would be a bird point. This one here I like. Because you, could, because you could stand it up to display. It's got a real flat base there. But 
I'm thinking this one might have been another spear point. Okay, because it doesn't have a base where you would attach it to a, an arrow shaft. So maybe a spear point, kind of a crude one, but definitely man-made. You can see where the flakes were chipped off to create the arrowhead. So you would hit this with a, another rock to chip off the chips. Okay, the flakes we call them, flakes, to create and you keep flaking it until you have the desired or the shape that you want. So I'm thinking this one was probably most likely a spear point as well, okay, for throwing. But I like this one, I like this one too. All right, then I have some up here. This one's a really big one. And I kind of have more information on this one. This one was used by the Woodlands Indian tribe Woodlands Native American tribe and they were they lived in the the middle part of the country and that's a big arrowhead you could see the point the body and the base right there but this one was definitely used to hunt big animals deer you know maybe maybe elk an elk is a very large animal Okay, so that one's a cool one. All right, so that's basically my arrowhead collection. I have a couple more here, and these are all obsidian. Now, I found these in an old rock collection that somebody gave me. So I was very happy to uh, find these at the bottom of an old box. So I was really excited when I found these. But these are all obsidian. Okay, these two at the top were probably spear points, okay? This one on the side here was most likely a knife used for cutting, not an arrowhead or spear point, but most likely used as a knife. And then this one here doesn't really have a sharp tip on it, so I'm also thinking that this one was just a cutting tool used, used for cutting, so this one was probably a knife as well. So let's have we have a spear point, spear point, knife, knife, and then down here, very small ones. So these were probably bird points here used for hunting small game or birds. But I was very happy to find these at the bottom of a box, bottom of a an old rock collection box that somebody gave me when I was a when I was a little kid. So that was pretty cool. Okay? One last thing I wanted to talk about, I have this super cool, and I wanted to show you this because it has the large arrowhead. This is an ax head actually, but I wanted to show you how the Native Americans would attach the arrowhead or in this case, the ax head to the actual shaft. So they would use some kind of material Okay, some kind of putty or something that would dry. And this is super strong. Okay. Now this is called uh, Acha Azteca or an Aztec hand axe. Okay. Now, obviously it's a reproduction. I bought this in Mexico um, in Tichnochitlan by the Mexican or the Aztec pyramids by Mexico City. And I also found out later that it's called a Palo de Luvia, Palo de Luvia, because it makes sound like a rain stick. Okay, so I'm thinking that this was, something like this was not used in battle. Something like this was used for ceremonies, because as you can see, we have some Aztec symbols, and Aztec gods on it. So this is probably more for, you know, an Aztec priest or an Aztec emperor to use during ceremonies and maybe, you know, to try to summon some rain. It was called a rain stick, uh, Palo de Luvia. So maybe this was used in ceremonies by Aztec priest 
to try to get the rain to come. Because if the rain doesn't come, you can't grow crops and you can't feed your people. So it was very important to have rain and to have ceremonies to make the gods pleased so that they could give the people rain. So we have an Aztec hand axe, also known as a rain stick. And it sounds like rain. All right, guys. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned a little bit about arrowheads today, about other stone tools as well, the kind of materials, the kind of rocks that arrowheads were made out of, some of the different types of arrowheads, and maybe where you could find arrowheads. I'm still looking for my first arrowhead. I'm going to find it. And maybe you would like to find your own arrowheads too and start your own collection. So for now, goodbye. Hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you next time. Thank you.